Hey guys, I'm Bjorn. And I'm Anders. We're from Inflames and we're hanging out with Rob, Front Row Live. Congratulations, album number 13 is a masterpiece. Uh, it's been on repeat. Um, it's, you guys went back with Howard Benson on this mm -hmm. one. Um, what was it about battles that you guys, you guys wanted to come back with, with Howard? So many things. I mean, we, we learned a lot from the guy. He has a perfect setup, you know, with uh, Mike Plotnikov, uh, Hutch, and the guys that were helping out. Um, super efficient. Um, and we just loved the place and the studio. The way the battles turned out was such a good experience that we wanted to do it again. Right. Really, yeah. Now, you know, when you guys went into the studio with this one, I feel like there was a little bit more, um, you could hear a little bit more melodic singing on this record, maybe, maybe on a song more like Follow Me. Um, so was that, was that a mindset that you kind of had for this record? Not at all. I mean, I do whatever I have to do. You know, it's, it's like painting a picture, you know. The music and the vocals should, should go well together. Uh, and it's, it's uh, with this one, we, at parts, we started with some lyrical content or, or melody, uh, or we started on the guitar, and then we just build from there. And whatever we, we feel mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. and end up on the album and if it sucks it we throw it away <laughs> so so it's it's just like just trying to write a, the best possible in flame, flames album that we can yeah. but that we have that mindset every time yeah. you know every time we go in to do an album that that's what we're thinking you know so yeah now can you tell me a little bit more how the song follow me kind of came out because i like how it starts off with the acoustic guitar and it you know throughout the song you hear the acoustic guitar and that's where you you hear some more singing yeah i mean we st i think our intention was to yeah, we want to bring, have some uh, acoustic guitar, but build the song mm. all the way to the end. So it, it doesn't, uh, it's it's easy to do it really calm in the beginning and then you blow it up in the chorus and then you bring it down again. But we would do this in stages and just be, uh, making it bigger and bigger and bigger. And I mean, on the last chorus, it's huge. Uh, so, and I, it turned out really, really well. I, I like the song a lot. And I think that song will sound extremely good live when, whenever we decide to do that. <laughs> well, how do you guys create such a big song like that? Does it start in the writing process? Does it start in the production process? No, I, it all starts in the writing process. We always have that mindset, exactly what Anders talked before. We, we need it to be doable live and hopefully even more powerful live. Yeah. So, so you have that mindset and then you just start working. You know, whatever melodies that are bouncing around in your head, um, you manage to you know, pin a few of them down, put it on tape, and then we start working. It's yeah. uh, there's no there's no real uh, recipe or, or no real plan to right. be honest. <laughs> it just happens, and you know. And if we like it, it's going to be on the record. You know. So battles was like the like the honeymoon session with with <laughs> Howard Benson with you guys, and then you guys came back for this record with it. How did he challenge you guys this second time around? Uh, he screamed on us a little bit more, <laughs> <laughs> so he pushed us a little bit more. I mean, first time, yeah, the honeymoon, you you get to know each other. Yeah. Uh, and now we, I mean, Bjorn and myself, we were prepared and we know how these guys, how they work, uh, but also they know us. And, and I, I think, you know, he knows really well how to, because I record my vocals with him and Bjorn is doing his parts with Mike Plotnikov right. and how I really know when to push me. And also, you know, shake me to life when I'm t dead and tired, you know, and he, uh, yeah, he's, he's really pushing me, making me be at my best when it's time to record mm. uh, so and he has a great sense of uh, like melodies harmonies and and uh, really good ear uh, so when we write stuff maybe Bjorn and myself we come up with a lead part or we have some some harmonies but then Howard also plays some stuff on the piano and I start singing after the piano and we we build it up that way right. and make the chorus even bigger um, f from what we had on the you know uh, the early demo stages is there like a specific track that kind of challenged you guys the most on this record? We haven't really played all of them live yet, so we don't know. <laughs> what about in the recording process? Yeah, I mean, I always try to, you know, when there's riffing and, and melodies and solos, I always try to push it uh, to, a, to a level where I'm not super comfortable yeah. in order for me to always have to practice a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, Call My Name, it's got a, a lot of guitar work there that's, that was pretty intricate to, to record, but having rehearsed it now a couple of times, it feels pretty good, you know. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, we haven't, uh, haven't played half of the song set, so I guess there, there will be complications. <laughs> but they're all made for, for live, so right. we should be fine. Now, this album, I The Mask, um, you kind of opened up about 
your identities. That's what I get from from when I hear the record. Um, what was it about this album that made you, you know, be okay with opening up to the world like that? And you know, how easy or how difficult was it? I don't think it's it is difficult uh, at all. I mean, it's it's just because um, I write in such a way that it, it's I use a lot of metaphors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That you, I, I still feel I have that because <laughs> I'm talking about masks and stuff. I still feel I, I have that shield in a way. Okay. You know, only a few friends. I, I let no them. Really yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but it's it's for me. It's like a therapy session as well. Mm -hmm. I write it down and then I give it away and then it's gone. Sort of. I things that you you have to get out. I guess. Yeah. So that I mean that's what it is about to to deal with deal with these things to to be able to see the future, see what, what lies ahead and, you know, and things like that. So I don't find it that difficult. Of course, it's, it could be difficult. Sometimes you do feel like you're stuck, like writing wise, but the topics, it's very, it's personal. And that's, I find it quite easy to, to, to go to these places and write about these things. I'm, I'm more, I'm better in writing the sadder parts than the, 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 the yolly happy tunes, you know what I mean? So now you guys have said in the past that you guys never like write more than what you need for a record. Um, in doing so, I feel like it's so difficult to know what you need for a record. Um, so, you know, when you guys are writing these songs, like what is it about this song, these songs that tell you, okay, this is going to make the record. This is not going to make the record. We could start another one. Well, it's, it's actually kind of cool because as soon as we have a few songs on the demo stage, um, Anders starts making the, the track list for the record really early on. Yeah, but it's awesome because because um, cool. then you have that as the sort of a blueprint. Yeah. Then you know what's going to be, what you need more of, uh, what you maybe don't need for the record. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's really good uh, to actually get an overview, right. you know. So that's how we do it. Now, how different was it working with Howard compared to your previous producer, Ben? I can't remember his last name. Well, we actually never worked with the producer like we did with Howard. Okay. Um, we've, for some reason, never, we've never been able to sort of let go we're very we've been very controlling uh, you know protective of our stuff like the music and the vocals yeah. lyrics every, everything but with how we we started working together better and and that's this is the first time i mean producers in the past have probably have those skill sets as well but mm -hmm. we just never tapped in on that you know no we weren't comfortable and i don't think we were ready for it yeah. but with how we figured off well, this guy is awesome you know and he's very experienced let's see what he has to say and you know Bite the bullet, <laughs> in a way. I, you know, and, and it was just a great experience. So, yeah. yeah. The, guys that, the guys that we work with uh, have been really, really good. I mean, and we learned a lot from those sessions as well, you know. Um, but sort of what Bjorn said, it's been friends. And okay. when they're friends, you have a different relationship. Yeah. And, and it's easier to say, uh, to turn down their idea. Mm -hmm for your own, <laughs> but with Howard, it's uh, that it wouldn't really work. <laughs> but, but it's, it's, very, it's uh, very direct and blunt, <laughs> yeah, and in, 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 in the best sense, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and, and yeah, I think we we came as far as we could with the, the uh, previous guys, mm -hmm. and I, I I had a great time, so it's, it's, it's we left uh, on good terms, so yeah. to speak, but it was it was time to work with someone someone else. Yeah. So and I, I noticed that Howard was also on the writer credits as well. He co-wrote with you guys as well. Um, what did you guys learn from from writing with Howard? Um, did he? I'm sure he has a different style of writing than you guys do. Um, but what did you guys pick up from it? Well, it's it's more. I, w I would say. I mean, we write the music, mm -hmm. and then he comes in and look over, and and he can say, oh this chorus maybe this is a pre-chorus instead or yeah. on this song you need another chorus or or you know change the riff here and there or, or whatever and and obviously with my vocals he, he takes part in in these things and i it's good for me to, as an i mean i speak swedish and uh, so it's good for me to to try my lyrics on him and he can actually actually challenge me and say what do you mean you know yeah. what, what do you want to say so I so that's where he comes in it it's not like he's picking up the guitar and write a guitar riff okay. uh, so it's more on the arrangement side and, and being just uh, being the guy that uh, uh, we bounce ideas on and off you know and then right. he comes with you know s s my, you know minor details where do this or do this and think about this or this is bloody awesome let's go you know right. 
Now, earlier you mentioned uh, the incorporation of keys. You guys started incorporating keys live on your sets. Um, did that kind of take any effect or impact in the creative process as well, or is no, that just for the no, live show? Not at all. Not at all. We've had key. I mean, we st started already on Colony, I think, uh, using that, but in a different way, of course. Uh, and then it became more on Route Remain when we started working with Orian uh, Onklu, who's still with us and writing uh, key parts, you know. But we always start with the guitar or the vocals, and and when the song is done, we add that element of the keys because it can never be. It, we will never let that overpower what is what is in flames, which is yeah. uh, I think it's the melody, the aggression, and it's the guitar, guitar, a uh, he heavy, um, heavy. Um, I mean, the guitar takes a, a big part. Um, so, and then we add the keys if if, if needed. But it, it's it's very. It's a big part of influence. I mean, we use drum loops and different synth parts, and and yeah. for the bigger shows in Europe, we have an, a keyboard player with us, uh, and I think that's, that's a great dynamic. Um, and he adds stuff live that we don't use on the record, but right here when we play a smaller show, we use like it's the drummer that controls that stuff. Right. Yeah. Now you kind of mentioned uh, "Reroute to Remain," the sixth album, which I feel like. That album was kind of like a big album for both your fans and yourselves because you chose to go a different direction in your sound. You wanted to try something different. Well, yeah, we we just changed the producer and, and studio, basically. That's the difference. Writing-wise, we, musically, we, we we write the same things, we, or at least whatever it is that we're not planning to do. It just happens, you know? And then we, it, there was no, again, the only thing we knew was that we wanted to work with somebody else. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and he has a special sound, I think. And so does the, you know, the studio has a certain sound, and mm. so did we at the time, you know. And we're still constantly developing our sound, and but it was just time. So musically, it, it, we didn't really change anything, you know, other than what we always do: try to take a next step uh, in, you know, evolving in flames into what we want to hear, you know. So yeah, I don't know. It's we we didn't change much yeah. besides producer and studio, which is pretty much a big deal I guess <laughs> yeah, I think this is how it is every time you know we, we record what we feel like I mean right. don't get me wrong we love our fans and the reason we can travel the world it's because of them right. but we write the music and then when it's you know mixed mastered we give it away to the record company it's released and then it's then it's up for debates and we, <laughs> it's out of our hands you know yeah. uh, and then people say this or that and it's it, it, that, that, that's totally fine but our mindset doesn't really change. We yeah. just, like I said before, we want to write the best possible In Flames album, you know, again and again and again. And since we don't write on the road, and it, it will be two, three years between albums, and obviously things happen, you know. And and then, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, big moments happen. You have, you get married, you have kids. How does that kind of impact the tour life, the 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 band life? Honestly, not. A, as much as you can think. Our, I mean, our kids grew up in this. They don't know anything else. <laughs> they know that their dad is going away for a while. Yeah, so here, here, like here, 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 here and there. And it just works for us, you know. I, I think it would be different and difficult if it happened, you know, today. Mm -hmm. And then you will bring up a kid today. Yeah. Uh, and Or you're new to this, whatever, and come in into this chaotic, I mean, because it's yeah. chaotic lifestyle. Right. Um, but we we don't know anything else, and it, it, we have our ways, and it works. Right. Now today's the last day of the North American tour, mm -hmm. and you guys are heading back to the UK. I want to say. Yeah, um, I think we have like a week off first, and then yeah. um, then the UK and France, right? Yeah, yeah. selected yeah. dates in Europe. Yeah. yeah. The, will you guys be touring in the U in the US again uh, later this year, maybe, or is that something we can maybe expect for the following year? I feel like you're already uh, packed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well. There's a ton of touring coming up for us. I'm, I don't think anything is set in stone for yeah. over here yet. Um, but we do have the summer festival. I mean, first Russia, then we have the summer festivals. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a ton of touring coming up. But after that, we'll see. I mean, we're obviously coming back. And to close us off, what do you think has been the biggest evolution in, in Flames over the span of the 13 records? Who's ready for that one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's for us to say. I mean, that's for, for people from the outside. I mean, yeah. I'm just barking super happy that we can still do this because we love being part of the we love being part of this band and we love creating music and we love touring the world and meeting our fans and and yeah. that's that's at least that's where i am and and the actual evolution it's it's uh i don't want to i don't you know <laughs>
<laughs> oh, no, he's, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're in the bubble, you know, yeah. we're in the bubble still, and um, we don't see an end to this. And I mean, if you want to be practical about it, I mean, when we joined uh, in 95 and we did Jester Race, I think that was kind of a step because mm. then it turned into a, a band and not a project anymore. Right. So that's a big deal, I think. And then we've changed studios a couple of times, and that might be out of practical, you know, information but that that's nothing to do with yeah. you know we can't really step outside and have a look at it if you ask me in 30 years <laughs> it's probably easier you know yeah. so yeah we'll see awesome guys well thanks for hanging out with me congratulations with either mask great record i uh look forward to seeing you guys live tonight Thank you guys be sure to check out in flames new album i the mask is out now thanks for watching on front row live